Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad for the Sad Truth. I wanted to uh, weigh in today uh, post the cruel ending of last night's uh, special edition of the Copa America between Argentina and Chile and then I woke up this morning to find out that uh, Lionel Messi had uh, retired from the national team. Uh, I guess I will start by saying, you know, why it is that I appreciate him uh, so much. You know, it's it's not that I have posters of Lionel Messi all over my room, along with my posters of Justin Bieber. Uh, obviously, it doesn't come from such a place, right? I'm not, as people say, you know, this uh, teenage fanboy. It's precisely because uh, I used to be a very serious competitive soccer player heading off uh, for a professional career in Europe uh, that I truly appreciate uh, his unique artistry. Uh, I'm old enough to have seen all of the greatest players of all time. Uh, Pele when I was very young, uh, Cruyff, Zidane, Maradona, uh, Zico. So, you know, you name every possible player that you could think of that typically makes it into the top five. And I've seen them play. And so I, I know uh, how great they all are and no one comes even remotely close to how great Messi is. Uh, to use some evolutionary language, some of you may have heard the term by Richard Dawkins, the extended phenotype. The extended phenotype refers to things like a spider's web or a beaver's dam. The idea is that they can construct these extensions of themselves precisely because uh, these extensions are part of the if you like the uh, within the genetic purview of a particular species well a soccer ball is part of the extended phenotype of Lionel Messi all other players have a clear distinction between who they are as individuals their physical bodies and the separate ball well the soccer ball is actually part of Lionel Messi's body that's how extraordinary uh, he caresses the ball how he runs with the ball uh, Pep uh, Guardiola once said that uh, there's only one player ever in the world who runs quicker with the ball at his feet than without it. Now I could sit here and list you all of the endless players, great players who've all said unequivocally that he's the greatest player ever. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will mention a few uh, right now. Let me just read them. Now this is uh, uh, Jorge Valdano, who played with him in the 1986 World Cup uh, with, with Maradona, uh, he said, Messi is Maradona every day. For the last five years, this is a few years ago, Messi has been the Maradona of the World Cup in Mexico. That's precisely what I've been saying. Maradona had a great World Cup in 1986. He helped Napoli win. But what Messi has done for the past 11, 12 years has been to play at a level that is unimaginable every single day. Uh, Cesar Menotti, some of you may know him, he used to be the coach of the 1978 uh, winning Argentinian team, uh, said Messi plays at the level of the best Maradona. Now surely you don't think that Valdano and Menotti are guys who don't understand soccer. They're Argentinian, one of whom played with Maradona. Other notable Argentinian, I'm reading here from uh, the relevant Wikipedia page, such as Osvaldo Ardiles, who won the 1978 World Cup for Argentina, Javier Zanetti, who holds the record for being most capped by Argentina, and Diego Simeone, who is currently the Atletico Madrid uh, coach and played uh, for Argentina, have expressed their beliefs that Messi has overtaken Maradona as the best player in history. And there are endless other players and coaches who've said so. The stats are not even close. I mean, literally, you could not even come close to comparing them. But let's discuss why this, frankly, cruel comparison continues. And that's because Maradona has won the World Cup in 1986, and Messi hasn't. Messi has lost three finals in a row. But now let's look at that. In 1986, when uh, Maradona won the World Cup. Uh, I can't remember who scored, but I think it was in the 84th minute uh, to break the 2-2 tie. So with six minutes left in the game, an Argentinian scored and they won the World Cup, right? So, so, so let's look at those six minutes. It could have gone the other way, right? I mean, it's literally six minutes, 60 seconds times six. Now, when 
Messi lost the World Cup in 2014. Uh, uh, the goal that was scored in overtime was in the 113th minute, meaning they were seven minutes away from ending the game tied and then going into penalty shots where anybody could have won. Given the current history of Argentina, maybe they would have lost. So on the one hand, you've got a guy who scores with six minutes left to win the World Cup in 1986. On the other hand, you've got the other flip of the coin, right? It's, it's all pretty random stuff with seven minutes left, uh, a guy scores and Argentina loses the World Cup. Now let's suppose that Argentina had won the 2014 World Cup, right? Because there was only seven minutes left and it was tied. Or let's suppose that the guy hadn't scored with six minutes left in 1986. Would that change who Maradona or Messi are as players? Of course not. Only a profound idiot, only somebody who is thinking from a strictly emotional perspective would argue. I mean, it's, it's literally irrational, right? In decision-making, we've got uh, different decision rules by which someone can make a choice. So for example, you could choose using what's called a compensatory rule. If you're choosing between different cars, uh, you will weigh the importance of the attributes defining each car by the scores of the cars on each of those attributes. And the car that scores the best wins. Now, this is called the normative rule because you're looking at all of the available information before you make a choice. That's called the rational choice. Now, you've got shortcuts whereby you don't look at all of the information in making a choice. So, for example, you could use something called the lexicographic heuristic, which basically says, choose the alternative that scores best on the most important attribute. So, if you're choosing between toothpaste and if uh, the price of the toothpaste is the most important attribute for you, then you will choose that toothpaste that scores uh, the lowest on price. Well, in the case of the Maradona Messi uh, issue debate, what ends up happening is that the collective information is completely ignored. When you put all of the information together, Maradona is not even remotely close statistically to what uh, Messi's done. I mean, literally, you, you wouldn't even remember him had it not been the case that if you use the lexicographic rule where it's only the World Cup win that matters, well, Maradona has won one and Messi has lost. Therefore, all of the other collective information is lost, disappears, and all that matters is that one is greater than zero Therefore, Maradona is a superior player. By definition in decision-making research, that's called a decisional shortcut. The rational decision uh, strategy is to look at all of the information. Okay. Now, why am I saying all this? Is it because I frankly care one way or the other? Well, yes, I care because in losing Messi, the world really loses a truly astonishing artist. Not only is he a just breathtaking player, but the manner in which he conducts himself. And we talk about athletes being as role models. I mean, think about the humility of this guy. Most people walk around being arrogant for profoundly less than what this guy has achieved. It's, it almost is impossible to understand how somebody could be so modest. It, it, it borders on being, you know, uh, unnatural, right? Uh, he never dives, he never cheats, uh, he never uh, comports himself in a way that would bring shame to his club or to his country. If you saw his face yesterday when he lost, I mean, who could argue that he doesn't care for his national team? He holds the record for most goals scored for his national team. He's taken his, uh, his country to four finals. And if the ball had, I mean, if Higuain uh, had scored in any of the three finals that he should have scored in, would that change whether Messi is the greatest player ever or not? Of course not. These are part of the vagaries, the randomness of the sport. So what people should be doing is really uh, rejoicing at his great artistry and frankly being sad that we may not have the privilege of seeing this player again. And the reality is, that it, it's precisely because even somebody, even a, 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 a hero like Messi, could no longer bear 
the endless, brutal criticism that he receives. I mean, if Messi could be criticized in the way that he is, no one is free of criticism. I mean, I see it in the venom that I receive from people who somehow have this profound hatred for Messi and either love Ronaldo or love Maradona and so on. Uh, I, you know, I get more uh, angry tweets or messages from such folks than I do when I criticize Islam. Which brings me to the next point. If there is one religion on earth, it's football. Football is the great equalizer. Football is the thing that makes Muslim and Jew and Christian and atheist and Buddhist and tall and short and fat and skinny and man and woman come together in the celebration of this magical game. You don't need to be tall. You don't need to be, uh, you don't need to have, I mean, on NBA, you need to be, you know, uniquely tall. Uh, here you've got a guy who's, you know, less than five foot seven. As a matter of fact, most of the great soccer players, Maradona, Zico, Pele, uh, Messi, are all actually quite short. So what makes football so beautiful is it's a simple game, an elegant game that ultimately unites humanity in ways that is unimaginable. So if I am sad today, it's because if we never see this guy play again, uh, frankly, the world is poorer for it. So let's stop with the arguing about Mar Maradona and Ronaldo. Let's hope that this beautiful player reconsiders, although I certainly understand the immeasurable heartache. I mean, I was gutted and I've got nothing to do with the Argentinian team. Imagine this guy who spent his life trying to win something for Argentina, always falling just short. I hope he reconsiders. I hope he goes to the 2018 World Cup. And I hope that we get to enjoy him for many more years. Any case, cheers. Those are my thoughts on the great Lionel Messi. Talk to you soon. Ciao.